Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's tutorial, I want to show you a neat trick for using ambient occlusion maps, whether they come from Quixel or other custom-made maps you've generated in Substance Painter or other such software. Now, if you've been using Unreal Engine 5 for a while, you might already know that ambient occlusion isn't fully supported out of the box when using Lumen. Unless you've seen my previous tutorial where I explain how to enable scene ambient occlusion using a post-process material and a few console commands, you're probably missing that extra shadowing detail in your project. Just make sure you watch that video, it's linked in the description below. But today's tutorial is a bit different. Instead of using scene ambient occlusion, we are going to focus on how to integrate ambient occlusion directly into your material shaders. This means you can apply ambient occlusion per mesh using any ambient occlusion map you've got. And best of all, it's generally cheaper performance-wise than enabling full scene ambient occlusion. It's a powerful trick that adds depth and realism to your assets without the overhead of full ambient occlusion. Um, God, I think I've said ambient occlusion like 50 times now. <laughs> anyway, with that said, let's jump right in. So here I am in an example scene that I'm going to show you on the ambient occlusion and how it works. I'm just moving around for the scene and this texture and that texture, there's two textures in here, are just part of this landscape. So one interesting thing that we can do here if we come out of the material is that I can actually play around with some settings and enable, it, and enable ambient occlusion. So if I look over here, I do actually have this setting which will allow me to add ambient occlusion right there, as you can see. Now, obviously, that's a bit too strong. So, you know, maybe, I mean, this, is, this would be without any ambient occlusion. So if I take in the um, ambient occlusion contrast intensity to zero, that's how the material would look like. But if I add just a little bit of contrast here and then improve the ambient occlusion by one or two or something like that you can already see that it's adding quite a bit of depth to the scene uh, where none would have been there uh, before so uh, people traditionally would very quickly create a sort of like a material i'll show you here uh, so they will go into a material and you know we're just gonna call this m test and i'm going to open it just to showcase what they'll usually do um, they will have a look at this material and will say right i've got a base color that goes in here then i've got uh, roughness metallic anti-isotropic whatever and i've also got an ambient occlusion so let me just actually go and bring in a mega scan just to show you the example here uh, so this is a texture, for example, uh, and this texture currently is set up to linear grayscale. We can actually, normally, you'd get it in as uh, masks, most likely. This is what it would be, the actual texture. So I'm just going to open it. If I, you know, when you import it from Quixel, it might just come in as masks, something like this, right? And if you go at the RGB level in here, you'll notice that R stands for occlusion, G stands for roughness, and B stands for uh, displacement. Okay, that's great. So we're interested in the R channel, which is the ambient occlusion. So normally what people would do with this texture over here, they would just take the ambient occlusion and drop it in there like that, and this would put the roughness in here, and then this B value would put it over into the displacement, or something of that sort of level right and what would happen you know if we take this material let's say we go back into the world here and we're just going to quickly go to the shapes and add a plane okay we're just going to put this plane somewhere where we can see it and then i'm going to drop this new material that we created right under this plane uh, let me just find the slot in here oh it's a bit higher up Right, so I've just put that material onto this. Now, there's nothing really to display because if we go back into the material, we don't really have any base color or anything like that. And I didn't even press apply to load up these maps. But if I do press apply, we'll be able to see something. Now, here's the interesting thing. If I go back into the material and I take the roughness out and I take the displacement out and press, press apply, go back into the demo, you can see there's nothing there. And there's no real way to see this, right? There's no, you can't make it show up unless you've done what I've told you in a previous tutorial, but even then it's still, you know, spotty. But what we can do is we can fake the ambient occlusion by tying it in to the base color over here. So I'm going to show you how to do just that in order for you to get a nice sort of control, right? Now, one thing that I do have is I've got these, um, I've, got, I've got these materials, like a material function, uh, which is MFAO. So if I drop this in, right? And let's just say the map here for ambient occlusion would go over into here and this would go into the output would go into the base color 
And now we do need a base color in here. So I'm just going to go back into that mega scans just to get this particular uh, base color. So this is what this is the this is it here. And I'm going to drop the RGB and now it's expecting some intensities here. So if I just put in two values very quickly uh, like that, and maybe I'll put this to a value of 1.5 and the contrast to a value of 0.4 or something like that. Right. If I press apply. Now we are getting the ambient occlusion right over here onto the uh, basic on the base color, right? Um, and this is a very interesting because, and I'll show you why um, what I'm saying is very interesting. It's because if we then change this value to like a three and press apply, now we can see that the ambient occlusion is further affecting the texture. So obviously this is an extreme example. You wouldn't want to do this specifically, but this kind of shows you just how you're adding that fake ambient occlusion very quickly. So I'll show you how to create that material function and then you can use it for yourself. Now, also another thing that I want to show is how the ambient occlusion then interacts if you actually have displacement enabled. So if I go on this uh, landscape, which you can obviously learn how to do this in my other previous tutorial on lan uh, nanite landscape displacement. So now we have displacement on and you can see in here we've got these rocks and I've got the material instance here for that. And that would be uh, this layer, layer 02. So I can actually push this to like a three or a four or a five, maybe like a three and increase the contrast a little bit, 0 0.4. Now you can see, obviously I've created quite a muddy look here. So it might not be the best kind of look, uh, maybe intensity of one, right? But now I've added ambient occlusion there where usually none would have been found. So if I put this contrast over to zero and the intensity over to zero, now there is no ambient occlusion, but if I undo, we're getting a bit over there. Obviously, I need to make sure that it's actually quite visible. So generally 1.5 works just fine, but you can see just how the, the difference is there if you don't have any, as opposed to having some, it just adds so much depth to the scene. You know, let me just, uh, you know, move around here with this and you'll notice it. Like just doing a before and after, you'll be able to see. So this is with zero. And then obviously the AO contrast to zero as well. But this is with, you know, I'm just trying to add a bit more now. And this is with, right? So you can see that that's just for one of the layers. But then if we go on to the next layer and this would be without, that's what it looks like without. But if we then add some depth here, so not too much, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, this would be zero. And this would be 0 0.2. You see what I mean? Like this is this is where we're adding a bit of, of effects between the crevices there that normally wouldn't be there. And that's really important. Now, very interesting to note is that if we do this workflow, you're not actually going to see anything here in the in the uh, buffer visualization. If you turn over ambient occlusion, you know, basically this is now showing that, you know, we're actually seeing this because we're actually using a map for it. But in theory, we wouldn't be seeing this if, um, you know, like in Unreal Engine without. So what I'm trying to say is like this wouldn't actually work unless you do this sort of workflow. So you can see here the post process is also drag, you know, dragging this. So if you go down here and where it says ambient occlusion, you've got the intensity and radius here that you can actually control. Right. So if I go back to lit mode like this, and we've got this ambient occlusion, you can see that in here in the actual you know, in the scene, nothing is really happening, right? Even though when you switch over into a buffer visualization and you go into ambient occlusion, you can see it and you can edit it from this point, but nothing actually happens in the Unreal Engine scene because, you know, if we're running Lumen as the scene here. And if I take that uh, plane, let me just go to that plane that we've made. You can see there that we're not even, we're not able to see it anyway on the plane. And if we search over the buffer visualization to material ambient occlusion, we're not going to see it either, like at all, because again, we haven't got anything plugged in there, but we can go in, you know, we can see that it's plugged in here. So in theory, there's no reason for it not to work, but it doesn't. Okay. And again, this might be misleading you have to buffer visualization and click ambient occlusion. And you might be misled to think, well, actually we know we have ambient occlusion right there. We can see it. But in the actual lit mode, that's not available. And in my post process volume, if we have a look, I've got um, a lumen disabled anyway. But if I do enable it, so I'm just going to put everything, I'm going to put it over to the lumen like this. And now go over here and buffer visualization 
and again ambient occlusion now it's not even showing anything right it you can't see it at all but again in my previous video i explained how to fix this but we're not doing it this way we're literally doing it a material shader so let's get that going I just wanted to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by myself, by Arganian's Puzzle Box. If you're interested in assets from my Unreal Engine, Fab Marketplace, or Patreon, or Gumroad, or ArtStation, please take a look at my offering. Now, bear in mind that the newest project that I've released is called the World Forge, and it's a nanite displacement landscape tool which allows people to create fantastic looking landscapes in a few minutes with just a few clicks by just dropping in this uh, shader, this uh, setup that I've got. It comes packed with nanite foliage, as I said, the nanite landscape itself. It also comes with the Atmos Forge and with some really nice, cool looking meshes with a very powerful shader that allows for nanite and RVT blending. This is basically a shortcut to your creation of an environment. So it's like a toolkit if you if you if you want to think about it that way. But effectively it runs quite well and it's optimized for Unreal Engine 5.3 and above. And yeah, uh, feel free to take a look. Um, let's get back to the tutorial. So to first get this to work, we need to create a new material with these new maps. So I've got an RGB and normal and or the map right here. So any of these, any any map that has an ambient occlusion inside of it, any texture you can actually use for this. So first thing we want to do is we want to bring in one minus node in here. We're going to drop it up here. Then we're going to also bring in a power node as well, so we can put that over into our scene. And then we're also going to bring in linear interpolate or a lerp node. And then we want to bring in a multiply node, and we'll put it up there on the shader. The, next, the first thing we want to do is we want to use this lerp. So we want to put our RGB in the B, ch uh, B channel of the lerp node. And then in the A value, we want to put our AO, our ambient occlusion effectively. So the first thing we want to do, let's add up a new parameter and we're going to call this ambient occlusion intensity. And we can connect that to the one minus and we can give it a value of, uh, let's say 1.5. Then the one minus can be connected over to the A value of the multiply node. We're using a one minus here because we want to reverse the number. Otherwise, whenever we would increase it, it would actually negatively impact the AO. So that's why we're inverting it. So it's positively active in the AO. Now in the B channel, we can actually uh, bring in our AO map. So we can just connect that over into the B channel. And then the multiply node can go in the A channel of the lerp node. And now we want to lerp in between these using this alpha. So this is actually quite nice. We can combine them using the power node. So in order for us to do this, what we'll do is we're on a new um, parameter called ambient occlusion contrast. And then this is going to be a default value of 0 0.2. And we're going to link this over into the exponent uh, uh, connection of the power node. And then the power node, into the power node, we then want to add the map, the ambient occlusion map into the base of the power node. And the power node itself will go into the alpha. And all the lerp will then go into our base color. And this is it, and we can connect now the normal, the roughness, and if you'd like, the displacement as well. So this is our material, and now we can actually turn this into a material instance, so we can create the material instance from that. And we can now control the options. So let's add the material instance to this uh, mesh. So we just drop it over into the slot of this plane in here. Um, now that we've added it, we are going to bring our material instance parameters. We only have two options, which is the AO contrast and AO intensity. So I can put the AO intensity maybe like a two or three or, you know, play around with these figures and you can see just how the effects are changing the map. We're also playing with the contrast and you can see this is allowing our AO to work in various different ways. And if you go with the contrast and the negative value, you'll be able to actually brighten up the texture instead of darkening it. Uh, so just make sure you get the right desired effect. Now, bear in mind that any value of the AO intensity that's uh, below one is probably going to affect the AO differently. So anything above one will actually affect the AO properly. Now, whenever you change this at a value of zero, you're kind of brightening the texture. So a value of one will actually darken it. But you can see just how much you can change this texture by just playing around with the contrast and the intensity. So it's a very powerful, simple workflow to get very different results. 
Now, if you go to like 1.4 or 1.5, it's probably the right amount of value to really push the ambient occlusion. So that's what it looks like and 1.5 and 0 0.2, which is where I would keep it in general. You can, you can then also, you can apply this to anything if you'd like, but let's make this into a material function instead of having all this mess in here. So right click and search for a material function um, and we can now call it MF uh, underscore ambient occlusion. And then if we open it, we can actually bring the nodes that we've created in our material and bring it into this function. So we're going to copy all these nodes into here. And then what we need is some function inputs in order to bring in the inputs. So the first input um, is going to be for the ambient uh, occlusion in input. So this is going to be where the map is going to show up. Just make sure this is an input scalar because we don't need it as a vector free. So we can connect that to the multiply and to the lerp node, uh, sorry, into the base node that we did before. And then we need another function input, and another, which will be a scalar. So this can be an ambient occlusion, um, like for, oh, sorry, this can be like a base color um, input. So that's fine. We can just use it as a base color. Uh, and this will go into the B value of our lerp, and then our lerp can connect to the output. Obviously, the output could be called uh, ambient occlusion output. Um, now, if you want to control these parameters as well, you can. So if we click apply, we can actually bring in the material function in here, but the parameters aren't showing up, only the base color and the ambient occlusion inputs. But we can connect these. So if we go back in here, just make sure that we add two more function inputs for the ambient occlusion intensity and the ambient occlusion contrast. But make sure the base color um, function input is actually set to vector free because it won't work as a scalar since it's an RGB input. Now we're going to just copy the name of the ambient occlusion intensity into a new function input, which we can have it set up as a scalar, connect it to the one minus, and then let's create another function input for the ambient occlusion contrast. So again, I'm just going to copy paste here and use the naming of the parameter and put it over into our new function input node and connect that to the uh, power node. Once we've done that, we can see that the material function now has the ambient occlusion intensity, ambient occlusion contrast, and we've got the maps as well. So I can just connect these and then just connect them over to the base color. And this is really what we're doing, and that should give us the effect that we're looking for. And now we have a, a cleaner setup to actually play with, with a material function. But I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial and that was very helpful for you. Uh, please feel free to have a look at my Patreon and my Fab Marketplace if you're interested in any assets from me. Um, as always, you're welcome to the Discord server as well. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep creating.